A little bit of a different video here today. We're going to be getting into how to download Fallout 4 Frost. So I've gotten a few comments and people wondering what I have my setup as or how did I even download it because it is kind of a daunting mod to get working and to get everything out of it. So we're going to go through that. Right now I'm on the home page of the Fallout 4 Frost mod. And on this home page, if you scroll down, you're going to see um, you know, introduction, installation, and you're going to see right here, it's highly recommended you read this guide. Once you click on that, it's going to take you to below zeros modding guide. Now, if you follow this step by step, you're good. If you're like, yo, this is a lot, keep watching, I'll do it all, and you can kind of see how to get it all done. To the left here, you have everything that you're going to need right it's, and it's broken up into chapters so it, it does organize it very nicely for you the first one is just an introduction blah 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 doesn't really matter you want to play the game okay go to requirements see if your pc can do it cool all right let's start you can choose basic guide recommended guide i did the recommended guide it's there's far more stuff to download um, I think the basic guide is just for a basic version of it. If you want to test it out, see if it is a mod that you'd be into. I've never downloaded this version. We're going for the recommended guide. So initial setup. If you have a clean install, you don't really have to worry about uninstalling, right? I'm doing this on a brand new PC, so I have a clean install, but there are some other stuff that we want to do. Open Steam, go to your library, go to Fallout 4 in the list, right click, manage, uninstall, navigate, delete. This is if you need to uninstall your game. Installing the game, go to your library, Fallout 4, install, cool. Post installation, this is very important. So, one thing you want to enable are file extensions if you have not. So, let's do that right now. So, the first thing we want to do is allow file extensions to be read. So you wanna to go to a folder like such, go to the view, go down to show, file name extensions. Now, what this will do is if you go to your PC and let's say we go to our files, we go to Steam, Steam apps, common we have our games here if you go to follow four you now see the extensions at the end of all of your files and we're going to need this to locate a few files in the installation process so the next step here is generating fresh ini files you want to run your follow for launcher from the game's root folder if you do not know what the root folder is you go here and they'll explain it to you here is the difference between the root and data folders the root folders are found by going to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Follow 4. That would be your root folder. Data for folders would be going one more step. So Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Follow 4, Data. Here's a visual representation of that. So I'm at this PC. I go into here. I go into Program Files. I then go to Steam. I then go into Steam Apps, Common, and here are all the games, Fallout 4. This would technically be your root folder, and then going into data would be your data folder. Next, you want to click OK to both pop-ups that say detecting video hardware. If there aren't any pop-ups, navigate documents, my games, follow for and delete all the files ending with I and I, then retry. So we're here in the root folder and we're going to Fallout 4 and we're gonna run the launcher. It's gonna ask us, do you wanna allow this app? Yes. There's gonna be a pop-up like it said, Fallout 4 will not detect your video hardware and set video options accordingly. Okay, your video hardware as unidentified video settings have been set to a low quality. Cool. Step three, select options, then select high preset options. Click OK and exit.
The final step in the initial setup is disabling the High Resolutions Texture Pack DLC. The main reasoning behind this is that the High Resolution Texture Pack and DLC isn't really that great and there's much better mods that you can just download to get better performance out of your game. So we're going to follow these steps right over here. First, we're going to go to your Steam library by clicking library at the top. Next, you're going to navigate down to your Fallout 4 game. Click on the support tab. You're going to navigate to DLC you own and show all DLC. At the moment, I don't have the high resolutions pack, but if you were to, there will be an option saying remove this from my library. This will permanently remove it. If you want it back, you will have to re-download it or repurchase whatever the add-on is. So make sure when you do do it up here, it says Fallout 4 high textures resolution pack and not the game or any other DLC. With that last step out of the way, we are done with the initial setup process and we can move on to the MO2. MO2 is going to be the Mod Organizer 2. So this is going to be the software you run to organize all your mods. This goes for Frost as well as any other mods that you want to add onto your game. So the first step is to do the download. We are going to click here to bring us to the download. You're going to get used to this screen because this is just like every other mod download screen. Step two, download. And if you have not already, you do want to log in to your Nexus Mods account. So once you're logged in and you go to the download, you'll get slow and fast download. If you don't pay for the premium and you just have a free account, you can only do the slow download. So we'll click that. You'll wait your five seconds. And your download will start. Once your download is finished, we're going to open that up. We're going to hit yes. I accept the agreement. When we are picking a location, the only thing we want to take note of is we want to pick any location outside of any default Windows folders like program files x86 and outside of the game's root folder. So this would be fine. Next, next, next. Create a desktop shortcut. Next, install. Once it asks you to create a new instance, we're going to click next, and we're going to want to create a portable instance. We're going to want to select Fallout 4, and we're going to keep this at default and hit next. This is going to ask you to connect your mod manager to your Nexus account. Once you're done, you're going to hit next and finish. The first time you open it up, it's going to ask you if you want to go through a tutorial. If you've never used mods, I definitely recommend this. I will go through a very simple tutorial later on in this video once we start downloading the bulk of what is Fallout 4 Frost. This is how your mod organizer should look once it is opened up. We are going to want to do a few things here that's recommended in the guide. The first thing the guide recommends us to do is changing the theme. This is obviously totally optional. However, the dark theme is a good one. So to change the theme, we're going to go over to tools. We are going to go to settings. From there, we're going to go to theme. And there are many different styles. It recommends us to do the VS15 dark. Hit OK, and it will now convert it to that. Now, the next step is creating profiles. So step one on creating a profile is select the MO2 profile button at the top of the MO2 to open the profiles menu. Select the default profile, then select copy. Name the new profile Frost. Select the Frost profile and make sure use profile specific game INI files is checked and select Frost Profile the next step is from the drop-down tweaks above and the left panels. panels. In this step, we will configure the game's INI files to increase performance-stability at minimal visual cost. 
click the puzzle piece. Next crucial step is and you select want to INI click on the editor. follow for Prof's INI tab. Our first change is going to be on the fourth line here from 14,000 to 7,000. And the one under it from 14,000 to 7,000. We're going to go to the one under that one and set from three to two. Next, we're going to go down to IMAX Focus Shadow dialog and set that from four to three. And then the one directly under that from four to three. Last step we're going to do is go down to F Blend Split Direct Shadow and set that from 48 to 96. Once we have all those new inputs changed, we are going to click Save. The next step we're going to do is go switch over to the Fallout 4 Customs INI tab. We are going to copy and paste these in there. So we're going to take those, copy them, go from the Prefs to the Custom, and just paste them right on in there and save. The last step here on the MO2 page is a little tutorial on how to install mods. You can read through this and it will show you how to manually download all the mods. Moving on to the next tab, we are going to download our utility mods here. So the first step we're going to do is click on this link here. You want to download the top most link. Once that's done, you want to open up the file and we're going to want to drop this content into the data's root, the game's root folder. Again, to find this folder, we're going to head to PC, Drivers, Program 68, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4. And we are now in the root folder. We are going to take these files and then just drop them right on in. Once that step's done, you want to reopen your mod organizer. When you go over to the tab here that says Fallout 4, you can now select F4SE. This is the script extender that we just downloaded. Next, we are going to want to go and download this. We're going to manual download it. Download. Slow download. Once you open up the file, we're going to take these two and we're going to slide them right into the root folder. From this point on, we are mostly going to be doing mod downloads. And this is the process for pretty much all of them. There are a few that are different that I will stop and go through, but we're going to click on the link. That link is going to bring us to the mod page. We're going to manually download it. Once that's manually downloaded, we are going to go to our mod organizer. So you're going to want to take that download and drag it into your downloads tab under F4SE. Once done, you can double click on it, hit OK, and it will pop over on the left side. Once it's done, you want to give it a check mark, and that is one downloaded mod. We're going to repeat this process going through all the different mods, bug fixes, important mods, user interface mods, optional lighting mods, frost mods, and then we'll go through the load order and being able to start the game. If you are comfortable downloading mods, you can skip ahead to load, load order. If you are not, you can stick around and I will go through each individual mod in the download process. Next mod is going to be buff out four. We're going to open that up manual download slow download. Once that download is done, we're going to take it, drag it into our downloads box, double click. Okay. Check mark high FPS physics fix. This mod has a few more installation steps. You do want to be cautious of this as you're going through all the different mods. Some of them aren't just as simple as download, drag, check mark. So for the beginning of this, we are going to manually download it and we're going to download the most recent version of it. Once that's done, drag it over here, double click, 
OK. Once it's on our left plane, we're going to double click on this, select the first, and we're going to make two changes in this box. The first change is going to be on line 37, and we're going to change this from false to true. The next change is going to be on line 44, and we're going to change this one from false to true as well. Once that's done, we're going to close, save, and give it a check mark. Congratulations, we are officially done with the utilities mod, and now we are going to move on to the bug fixes. First, we are going to download the unofficial Fallout 4 patch. We're going to take it, drop it into the right plane, and before we move it over to the left plane, we are going to create a new section. To create a new section, we are going to right click on the left plane, create separator, and we are going to name this separator bug fixes. With that separator now there, we are going to take our unofficial follow for patch, drag it in, OK, and give it a check mark. Next, we are going to download the Sprint Stutter Fix, Manual Download, and we are going to download the top file. Once that's downloaded, drag it to our right plane, double click, OK, and give it a check. Next, we are going to download the Weapon Debris Crash Fix, Manual Download, Download. Once that's finished, drag it onto our right plane, double click, OK, and give it a check mark. Before we continue, I want to recommend splitting your screen between your download list and your mod organizer. Next, we're going to do the bullet counted reload system. Manual download, download, slow download. We're going to drag that onto our right plane. Double click, OK, and check mark. The last mod on our bug fixes is going to be our crafting highlight fix. Manual download, slow download. We are going to take that download to our right plane, double click, OK, and check mark. Congratulations, we are all done with the bug fixes. Now we are going into the important mods. We are going to create another separator. We are going to create another separator, and we are going to name this one Important Mods. First mod, we are going to download as Better Console, Manual Download, Slow Download. We are going to take our files, drag them on the right side, double click, OK, and check mark. Next, we are going to download Unlimited Survival Mode. We are going to Manual Download. Download, slow download. We're going to take those files, drag them on our right plane, double click, OK, check mark. Next, we are going to download the mod configurations menu, manual download, download, slow download. We're going to take those files, drag them onto our right plane, double click. OK. Check mark. We're going to continue on to the game configurations menu. It is to note there are a few installations that we have to make here. We are going to hit manual, downloads, and here are the different files. We are going to want to download each individual one. We're going to start with the game configurations menu, download, slow download. We're going to take those files, drag them onto our right plane. Double click, OK, check mark. We're going to go back, download the Automatron file, slow download, take those files, drag them to our right plane, double click, OK, check mark. Lastly, we're going to download the Far Harbor file. And you will download, slow download, drag those files onto your right plane, double click. OK, and check mark. Next mod is going to be the Survival Configurations menu. 
Manual download, download, slow download. We're going to take those files and drag them onto our right plane. Double click, OK, and check mark. The next download is going to be the classic holstered weapon system. This mod is very important for Fallout 4 Frost. You die very easily, and for you to be able to observe what weapons enemies are holding is very crucial. We are going to manually download it, download, slow download, drag those files onto your right plane, double click, OK, check mark. Next, we are going to download the Level Up Healing Removed, Manual Download, Slow Download. We're going to take those files, drag them onto our right plane, double click. Now, this is going to ask you for a couple steps. So you can select one or more of these options. Checking it will apply it. So Level Up Healing Removed. If you want to be extra hardcore, you can also click sleep healing removed, although I do not recommend. Install, it will be installed on your left plane now and you can give that a check mark. Next mod is gonna be the campsites mod. Manual download, slow download. We're gonna take those files, move them onto our right plane, double click, okay, and check mark. So this next mod is pack attack NPCs. This mod is not on Nexus mods. There is a whole installation instructions. This does take some time because you do have to get okayed into the Discord server and it may take up to eight hours. This step personally I have skipped just due to wanting to play the game as soon as possible. However, if you do want a better experience, a more immersion, immersive experience with better AI, I would recommend. Since I have never downloaded this, I'm not going to pretend to know how to. So if you do want to download this, I recommend just going through the steps that are listed here. They are fairly detailed and you will be able to get it installed. With that out of the way, you are officially done with your important mods and you could go into your user interface mods. Before we continue, we are going to create another divider, create separator, we're going to name this one user interface. The first mod we're going to download is pip boy tabs. We're going to manually download, download, slow download. We're going to take those files and drag them onto our right plane. Double click. Okay. And check mark. The next mod is going to be level up menu EX. This mod changes the level up menu to allow other mods to add new perks and skills into the game. One thing I wanna note about this next mod is if you are coming from being a console player, you may find the level up menu a bit jarring. This mod I have personally uninstalled just to keep the simplicity of leveling up much easier on the eyes. If you are to download it, you wanna go through the same process that we've been going through. Manual download download, and slow download. You're going to take those files, drag them onto your right plane, double click, OK, and check mark. I am going to leave this unchecked due to my preferences. Next mod is going to be the HUD framework mod. We're going to manually download, slow download, take those files and drag them onto our right plane, double click, OK, and check mark. The last mod in this section is going to be the immersive HUD. We're going to manually download, download, slow download, take those files, move them onto your right plane, double click, OK, and check. The next section is going to be the lighting mods. For my personal preference, although this can make the game look much better, it is more costly on your system and on your performance. For that reason alone, I am not going to be downloading any mods from this section. However, the installation process is similar to what we have been doing. So with that optional section out of the way, we are going to go into the Frost mods. We are going to want to create a new separator and label this separator Frost. 
First mod of the final section is going to be the Frost Survival Simulator. We are going to manually download, download, slow download. Once that mod's downloaded, we are going to take that file, move it over to our right plane, scroll down, double tap, OK, and check mark. After that, we are going to download the Frost more starting locations. We are going to manually download, download the most recent file, download, slow download. We are going to take those files, drag them onto the right plane, scroll down, double click, OK and check mark. Next we're going to download the Frost official updates. We're going to manual download, download, slow download. Once the download's finished, we're going to take those files, move them over to our right plane, scroll down, double click. We're going to click next. If you downloaded the campsites mod, which we did, we're going to make sure this is checked and hit next. If you did not download the campsites mod, you can hit the optional button down here and click next. This is indicating if you don't use the CBBE as a body replacer mod, select this option. We do not. And these are just more options for the download. Sending near explosions makes the screen blurry for a second and creates a double vision effect for maximum immersion. This is totally optional and up to your decision. Once that's finished, we just want to give it a check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Nuka World add-on. We're going to hit manual and download. Slow download. Once that's finished, we're going to take those files, drag them onto our right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Now you're going to notice this little lightning bolt. Overwritten loose files, overwrites loose files. Now I am not to computer savvy or mod savvy. I have ran this with these indications and it runs fine. Now I've not gotten to the Nuka World add-on in Frost, so maybe there might be issues there. However, if you don't plan on it or you are just interested in the base game, there is no issues as far as I have witnessed. Next is gonna be the Frost plus manual download, download, Slow download. Once the mod is done downloading, we are going to take those files and move them into the right plane. Double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Headless Dead Ferals fix. Manual download, download, slow download. We are going to take those files, move them onto our right plane. Double click, OK, and check mark. Next mod is going to be the Frost UFO 4P compatibility patch. Manual download, download, slow download. We're going to take those files, drag them onto our right plane, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Lore Tweaked Sanity Loss. We're going to manually download, download, slow download. Drag those files to our right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be the Frost It Snowed mod. Manual download, download, slow download. Once it's done, we're going to take those files, move them onto our right plane, scroll down, double click, OK. And check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Snowy Weathers. We're going to hit manual download, download, slow download. We're going to take those files, move them onto our right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be Frost Lootable Cars. Manual download, download, slow download. We are going to take those files, move them onto our right plane. Scroll down, double click. We have a few different options for this. So we have original, intermediate, realistic, scarcity. They all come with their own different descriptions. And then the other option is looting experience, hindered or unhindered. Looting presets are totally optional and up to your preference. Personally, I like realistic. 
and unhindered. Once that's done, check mark and you're good. Next is freeze intimidation overhaul, manual download, slow download. We are going to take those files and drag them onto the right plane. Scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Sanity tab. Next is going to be the Frost Sanity tab. Manual download, slow download. We are going to take those files, drag them onto the right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Dark Calling. Manual download, slow download. We are going to take those files and drag them onto the right plane. Scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be the Frost Hunkered Down. Manual download. Slow download. Next, we are going to take those files, drag them onto the right plane. Scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next download has a longer process. It's going to be the Frost Accessible Locations. Once you open this up, you'll be directed to a folder. You want to download all the mods with the Frost caption on the bottom left corner. First, we'll start with Fort Hagen. Manual. Download. Slow download. We are going to take those files, drag them onto the right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next, we'll do Fort Strong. Manual download. Download and slow download. We are going to take those files, drag them to the right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. Next, we'll do med tech research, manual download, slow download. We're going to take those files, move them to the right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. And lastly, we are going to do arc jet, manual download, slow download, we're going to take those files, move them onto the right plane, scroll down, double click, OK, and check mark. With all four of those downloaded, we can move on to the Frost CHW Pre Config INI. Manual download, download, slow download. We're going to take those files, drag them to the right plane, double click, OK, and check mark. Next is going to be Frost PNC PC Patch. This has to do with the mod we talked about earlier and the one that is not available on Nexus mods. So if you did go through the process to download that, you would want to go ahead and download this one as well. If not, you can move on. Next mod is going to be the Frost Cell Fixes. This has a few different files that we are going to have to install. We are going to hit Manual. Here we have the Frost Cell Fixes. Frost cell fixes miscellaneous patch, Frost cell fixes Nuka Cola World, and Frost cell fixes hot fixes. All three of these will have to be downloaded. First, we will do Frost cell fixes FCF download, slow download. Once that's done, we're going to take those files, drag them to our right panel, scroll down, double click, hit OK. You have texture options. Obviously, if you have a higher rig, you want to go with the higher option. If you have a lower rig, you want to go with probably the lower option. I'm going to stay over at 2K. And check mark. Next, we're going to go down to the miscellaneous patch. Manual download. Download. Slow download. Once that's finished, you want to take those files, drag them to our right panel, double click, more starting locations. Next. This is for separate DLCs. I'm unsure if this is stuff that is uh, for Frost. I would assume so, but I don't have these downloaded, so I'm not going to mess with any of these. This is also an interior lighting thing. Um, we didn't download any of these, but if you did download any of the lighting mods during that portion of the download process, you would use the one that you downloaded. Same for the JSRS sound mod. And give it a check mark. Next is the Nuka World add on. Manual download. Download. Slow download. Once that's finished downloading, we're going to take that file, bring it over to our right plane, scroll down, download, 
check mark next we don't have any of those mods so we're going to hit install if you did download any of the optional lighting mods you would enable them here install and check mark lastly is going to be the frost cell fixes fcf hot fix manual download download slow download once that's finished we're going to take those files drag them to the right panel scroll down double click i have read the description install and check mark and after that you are officially done with all the mods you need to download to get this game working but next we have to move on to the crucial step of load order if you're familiar with modding then you are familiar with what a load order is if you are not luckily this guide has a very detailed load order with all the mods that you just downloaded so you follow this load order and we are going to do that over on our nexus mods right now so the guide does give you an mo2 sorting crash course if you need it i'm going to show you a very simple version of how to do it in this video so this right portion here is going to be your load order now these mods are in there by the order that we have downloaded them which is roughly the right order but we do have to switch some things around so the first section is going to be your bethesda files to make this a little bit easier on the eyes i'm going to drag our load order just to make it a bit larger so fallout 4 dlc robot dlc workshop 1 dlc coast workshop 2 workshop 2 nuka world those are all good we can move on to the master files for the master files we are going to want pnc pc if you cannot find that that is because pnc pc is the mod that needs to be downloaded on the discord server which i have not shown how to do in this tutorial next would be the hud framework so we're going to grab the hud framework and we're going to drag it all the way to the top next would be the fallout 4 unofficial patch which is there in addition they don't list what else would be there but put all esm files and esm flagged esp files here so we're going to go down and look for any esp files and esm files once you're done with that we're going to move down to frost unrelated mods so we're going to start off with the gcm doc gcm doc automatron we're going to move that up next we're going to do the gmc far harbor next we're going to do the gmc esp next csm esp after that z level up healing after that we're going to do the immersive hud esp we're going to move on to the next section this is going to be your frost main files so we will put frost esp frost timor doors reds frost fixes frost nuka world a frost mod frost feral fix frost ufop next are going to be all standalone frost mods starting with argon frost sanity tweak next it snowed after that snowy weather after that lootable cars after lootable cars is going to be your setting that you set whether it's realistic scarcity or intermediate after that is going to be freeze esp followed by frost pit tab after that is going to be frost accessible med tech research followed by fort strong followed by arc jet followed by fort hagen followed by super mutant location hunker down esp the next section would be for frost patches this would be for the patch that was for the pnc pc mod which was the mod that is downloaded on the discord server the patch for that so if you did go through that process this is where you would place the patch after that you have all your fcfs in order by main 
Previsibine, Previsibine doors by pre, followed by pre and w, and then pre doors. And then after the last section, there's an example load order that you can look into. There are a few things that were not listed, like the campsites and then the frost campsites patch. So I left them in roughly in the area where it seemed like they belong. And this should be all good to go. So that is the end of the mod setup. This is how it looks for me. Now, there are a few things here that look a little scary if you don't understand what's going on. If you are more mod savvy, please leave comments below giving explanations. If you have questions, please leave them down below. I am going to move forward with what works for me and sharing a few things on the initial start of the game. So let's go about starting the mod. You want to go into your mod organizer, make sure it's on F4SE and hit play. The game will start up. And from there, you can start a new game by hitting new game. Once you're in game, you'll notice the music is a bit different and loud, might I add. However, that will confirm that, yeah, you got it. It's working. Just to confirm, we can start a new game. The intro cinematic is not going to be different, so you can skip that. However, from this point on, the game is different. Just let go. It'll all be over soon. It's just nuclear war, really? Could that actually happen? You think? Here we go again. Right. Now we're going to run through this really quickly, and I just want to show you a few menus and things you might need to do once you get this working to make sure that it's working properly. So first things first, you want to go over to your settings and set your gameplay to survival. Sometimes it will be there automatically. Other times you'll have to set it yourself. And I hope that works well for you guys. That is the setup that I run. It runs buttery smooth. I haven't had any issues with it. So hopefully it works for you guys. Like I said, I'm not super mod knowledgeable and computer savvy, but I have figured all of that out and got it to work for me. So hopefully it works for you guys. If you have questions and stuff, leave in the comments. Hopefully someone more intelligent than me in the modding community will be able to answer those for you. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great day and enjoy Fallout 4 Frost.